about what Christmas is all about, but we do not forget the reason for the season. In your name we pray. Amen. You know, I want to begin today with something familiar. <coughs> Let's begin this morning by first talking about the torch. Okay, the torch is important. A torch's main purpose is to shed light on things. Things like possibly a pathway that, that we walk on in dark places. How many of you know who this guy is? There's a few of you. You know, this is Bear Grylls. Okay, Bear Grylls, let me explain what Bear Grylls does. He's a survival expert, and he goes out in, in, in different lands across the, the world, and he teaches people how to survive if they're placed into that situation. And, and I've always told my wife, because if you know who Bear Grylls is, he eats anything. It doesn't matter. It's disgusting. And, and where we're at in the plains, he would eat scorpions live. He'd just cut off their stinger and put it in his mouth, chew it down, swallow it. But I've always told my wife, she thinks I'm crazy for watching it, but I told her, one of these days you're going to thank me. Because we might just be in that survival situation, and I'm going to feed you scorpions and you'll survive. So I don't know about that. But the reason I pulled this guy up is any time that Bear Grylls goes into a dark place, the first thing he does is he makes a torch. He knows what materials are involved in the area that he's at. He incorporates that, that's going to burn the longest, burn the best, and he makes a torch. And many times while traveling in the caves, guess what happens to his torch? It burns out. It burns out completely. And most commonly, when that happens, he's got a camera crew that's filming him. He grabs the infrared camera and finds his way out of the cave. Well, I remember one episode specifically that I was watching where he decided his, his flame had burned out, his torch went out, and he decided to show how it really would be for you and I if we're in that situation, in that dark cave without a torch. And as he traveled through the, creek, the cave in complete darkness, he's walking along and all of a sudden he disappears. And you hear him falling and he lands in a pool of water in a river below. Well, without the torch or his light of the torch, his vision was very limited. I often wonder, while watching that episode, what was going through his mind at the moment that he was falling. I wonder if he thought, I should have thought that through a little better. You know, you know, his camera crew is probably 20 feet up. He's down in this cave in this river that's flowing. Or probably not my best idea. Should have thought that through. Well, at the moment that that happened, I'm sure that he was thinking, man, it's almost impossible to get out of here, to get out of this dark cave without light. I'm sure he was thinking that. Now, think back to the statement that I shared with you earlier about the main purpose of a torch. What does a torch do? A torch's main <coughs> purpose is to shed light. To shed light, to reveal things. Okay? So... Who is the only person mentioned in the Bible who was referred to as light? Jesus. That's right, Jesus. So why would following a torch or Jesus in our world today be so important? Well, you don't have to go very far to see what's going on in the world we live in, ladies and gentlemen. Look outside these doors. Look outside these walls in the city of Hobbes alone. Just like Bear Grylls in the cave without a torch, the world around us is saturated with darkness and despair. It's a very difficult place to survive in. And you know what? People are looking for a way out. They are looking for that way out. But without people like yourself being in a Christian-founded school, sharing the message of Christ with these people, they have no hope of the future. You see, for Christians like myself, and I hope everyone in here is a Christian, but for Christians, Christmas is a time of rejoicing. It's a time of hope. It's a time of excitement because we look forward to the gifts because we know that it's not about the gifts, it's about the giver. We get it. We understand the reason for the season. But for those who do not know about Jesus and the life-changing story of the cross, life itself is very dark, just like in a cave. And the Christmas holiday is no more than a time for these people of spending and acquiring debt and regret. 
Because what do you do? Do you feel, if, if it feels it just me, when somebody buys me a gift, I feel obligated to return that favor because it's the right thing to do. Well, if you live in a family that doesn't know Christ and, and you don't know the reason for the season and 10 of your family members get you a gift, guess what you got to do? You're obligated to go out and buy 10 gifts. Well, if you don't have money like me, you got to put it on the plastic. So what happens is for the Christmas season, it's not about the gift. It's, it's about challenges that you face. This is the main reason. This is the very main reason that God sent Jesus into this world. You see, without Jesus, there is no hope for mankind, and there is no hope for a future. We read in the book of John, chapter 12, verse 35, the very reason that Jesus came into this world. You see, he was born into this world to be the light, or the torch bearer, we'll say, of this world. Jesus was sent into this world to shed his light with the hope. With the hope, God sent Jesus to earth with the hope that all mankind would see, that all mankind would understand, and that all mankind would transform or change from living in darkness into light. In, verse, in, in John chapter 12, verse 35, Jesus shares with all those that are sitting around him at that moment these words. He shares these words. Follow along. The light is among you for a little while longer, referring to himself. The light is, a, is among you for a little while longer, and then he says these powerful words. Walk while you have the light. That's, that's from God himself. Jesus shares this. Walk while you have the light. Least darkness will take over you. And then he goes on to say, if you choose not to walk in the light, the one who walks in darkness does not know where he's going. You're going to walk around life for the rest of your life miserable and in despair. Or you can choose to change and accept the fact that Jesus came to earth for each one of you today. Myself, Brother Reed, Pastor Chuck, every one of us, Jesus came to this earth for us. Jesus was sent to this earth to be a torchbearer so that his disciples, which is every one of us that claim his name, people just like you and I. I look around this room and you know what I see? I see myself. I see myself at a young age, not knowing what the next step was for my life. Knowing that there had to be more to the situation that I was born into. That was me sitting out there today listening to myself. And whether, whether or not you're ready to admit it or not, Jesus, which is the, the reason for the season, expects each one of you here to be a difference maker in this life. Some of you are here because you're athletes. Most of you are. And I give you credit. I went all conference in baseball in high school. Loved playing baseball. But you know what? God had bigger plans for me. It wasn't the pros. It was reaching people for Him. And I don't regret that choice by any means. You see, here's the problem with life. Life is fun, it's fun, it's fun. But, because of sin, every person, including yourself, is born into darkness. We carry around this little black bag on our back called sin. <coughs> And we're born into it. We don't, we, we don't invite it in. It just happened because of Adam and Eve in the garden. The result of this is living life in a dark cave. Like Bear Girls was traveling that day without his torch. And here's the thing. Without Jesus' torch, or without Jesus placed firmly into your hand, you cannot find the way out by yourself. Does that make sense to you? The only way that you can get Jesus into your life is to ask. To, to tell him, I'm a sinner. Say, I've made mistakes in life. Forgive me of my past. I want, from this point on, I want to serve you. I want to live for you. Forgive me of my sin. And, and boom, it happens. Your life change begins. You see, the, the crazy thing about this is, you and I, all you guys, ladies and gentlemen, we are all alike. It's not an accident that you're here today. We have all been called to a higher calling in this life. How many of you even know, and this is fun because I didn't know it when I went up to college, how many of you know what your mission statement here at the college says? Who has that memorized? Yeah, that just are good for you, man. That's huge. But let me just share this. I'm, I'm excited, man. I can just say, man, let's go. Let's pray. Amen. No. Let me share this with you. The University of the Southwest is a Christ-centered educational community dedicated to developing men and women for a lifetime of servant leadership. That's very important to catch that little phrase. 
for a lifetime of servant leadership by emphasizing individual faith, responsibility, and initiative. Okay, now there's now's the cool part. Some of you here are seniors. Who is it? One, two, three. Okay, here's the, here's the challenge. Some of you are seniors. And after graduating this spring, and this is for you that are juniors as well, just make a year in advance. After graduating this spring, God, excuse me, God needs to know what your plans are. He needs to know what, you have, what, what you're planning to do. Are you planning on continuing to, to place Jesus' torch first place in your life and become a difference maker in this life? You know, think about where you're going to be next year at this time. Let me remind you what Jesus shares about the gift of serving him from Matthew chapter 22, verse 14. For many are called, but few are chosen. You see, as each of you carry the light of Jesus to illuminate the path that you travel in your life, you need to be aware of a few things. If this is the route that you've decided to take, and I pray it is because you're here at the USW and what they stand for. I pray that you're placing Jesus first in your life. And if you are, I just need to, to, to kind of inform you. Because of the way and because of what you believe, you now stand daily face to face with Jesus' number one adversary, which is Satan. And I'm going to be honest with you. His only objective in this life is to distract you and keep you from accomplishing what God has already placed in your path. You cannot allow Satan to disrupt what God has already planned. If you do, you will live a miserable life. A life of distraction, of discouragement. That is a promise. You see, Satan lives in the darkness. He's in the cave. He is. He's in the darkness. And Jesus once again confirms this. By, by the verses we read in John chapter 3, verse 20. Let me read this real quick, and I'm getting close to the end. Stay with me. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light. So if you hate light, if you hate Jesus, you love wicked things. That's what the Bible says. Let me tell you what, judgment day is coming. You can't avoid it, you can't avoid it, you can't avoid it, and I can't avoid it. It's coming. You know what? Do not, do not take for granted the power of the life that each of you hold at the tips of your fingers. I'm going to share something with you. The, the decision that you make today after the chapel will affect generations to come. Let me just share with you what's happened since I've been a pastor. Here in Hobbs, I've been here two and a half, I'm going on my third year. And uh, this is a letter that I received from one of my members. And uh, just let me read this. When I first started coming to the Sunday service, I did not know what to expect. I was amazed by your sermon and the people there at the church. I never took my religion seriously until that day. I decided to start a quest to better understand the Bible, so I started to read it in April of 2012. And now it is July of 2012, and I have read every word from start to finish. I've got his record book to prove that, Brother Kenny. My life has changed for the better. I have been blessed by the Holy Spirit, and with God's help, the things I have prayed for are coming true. I will also use my Bible as a guide in my life. That's, that's Jesus. And everything that I do, because of you, it's not me, it's him. I will never have any doubts about anything that will happen or why. God has truly blessed you, and you are helping others to gain that same knowledge and understanding. So with that, I want you to have this token of my guide that tracked my cross progress. He handed me this, this trifolded piece of paper that Pastor Chuck in the box designed when he got here with us this last year. And it had every Bible reading in a year. And it was so frail and used. And every little box was checked because he read that verse. And he wanted me, he gave me the original. Huge. You don't know the difference that you can make in somebody's life by saying, okay, Jesus, I believe in you. I understand that you came to earth for a purpose. There's a reason for it. Hit that last slide. And I'm closing down, ladies and gentlemen. You, each one of you, I believe this with all my heart, each one of you are the torch bearers. And you know what? You're also the Mustangs. That holds a special place in my heart. I went to Bethany High School in Bethany, Illinois, and we were the Mustangs. So you are a Mustang. You are a torch bearer. 
And there are people all over this world waiting for you to share your story with them. And this is where I'm closing down. Mustangs are not meant to be caged up. I've never seen a Mustang that's happy when it's caged up. I see a Mustang that's happy when it's running on the prairie and it's running free and strong and proud. That's each one of you. The education that you've taken in this school and that you learned in this school and the chapel services you listened to throughout the years, whether you want to be here or not, grab something out of them, put it into your life, and watch what Jesus can do. It's important. You're important. And God is important. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity just to listen to a few quick words. Father, I just pray right now for this student body, for this staff, for this school. God, this is the next generation that can make a difference in this world, in this world that desperately needs change. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to be here. I pray that my words encourage. I pray that my words challenge some students. God, I pray that if there's one student here today that says, you know what, I want what you're talking about, Pastor Fred. That they would be willing to come up to myself or Pastor Chuck or Brother Kenny and say, you know what, take a few minutes. I'll be late for class. I'm going to make the biggest decision of my life. I want to serve you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you for the opportunity. What you've just heard is the most important message to come out of this semester. We've heard a lot about a lot of different torch bearers throughout the semester. But if you're not letting Jesus lead you where it really counts, you have no way to lead others. So, Pastor, thank you for that word this morning. We're going to dismiss in prayer. Zach, would you come and dismiss in prayer? Before I dismiss, um, just have a quick announcement. Uh, I'll make it real brief. Um, over, over the last year and a half, I've got to serve under one of the best men I've ever known. And uh, I served under him here in the campus ministry team and in his church. And uh, this, as many of you know, he sent out an email yesterday. This is Pastor Reed's last Wednesday chapter with us as he's going to be stepping down from his campus ministry spot here in ESW. And uh, we're going to be grateful to see I can say that. He's one of the best men I've ever known. Yeah. I hope you all miss him. Just tell him goodbye, wish him luck. And uh, we're uh, going to be praying for him in his ministry as he continues on. So um, let's all stand. And tell me about God. Dear Father, thank you for this wonderful message. God just uh, helps to go out and apply to our lives and live as Jesus did. We look at what did you do, Lord, what did Jesus do, and we do it. Apply to us, apply that to our lives and be the torch bearers. And I pray for Pastor Reed, Lord, that we bless his ministry tenfold wherever he goes, God. We bless him, Lord.